Hello my peeps, this is Tracy here, uh, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. Um, I'm making a series of videos, I don't actually know which number this is in the series, I'll be honest with you, of just the basics of stamping. And then I will get into more specifics of the Stampin' Up! products that I use. You'll see them in all the videos and I might mention like bits and pieces about them. But then there will be more specific videos about those products. When I tell you that you need, you can use a marker, I use Stampin' Up! markers. I love the quality, I love the coordination. There's many, many things I think go for Stampin' Up! Um, many good reasons. If you have other markers, use other markers, especially when you're at the beginning. Um, use what you have. And this is, this is kind of the point of today's designing a card. I, I was, I couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to call it, but I decided to call it designing a card. Um, there's so many levels and there's so many products and it can be very overwhelming if you're first starting. Sometimes it can be very overwhelming if you've been doing it for a long time and you're just trying to make it all work. Um, but what I wanted to do was give you some examples and give you some, like show you some things and show you a couple quick tips that will make the stuff you have to begin with when you start, go a little further and then start to give you ideas of maybe the things you want to add in as you can. Whether it's just comfort level, budget, um, the time you have to get fancier with things, whatever it works out to be. Um, that's what I'm hoping to help you with. So, let's design some cards. <laughs> I just need to switch my camera. Hit the wrong button. Sorry, here we go. <laughs> and I'm back. Okay, so I have this many cards to show you. Um, and sound effects. The sound effects are for free, just so you know. Okay. So let's start at the very, let's start at the very beginning. Isn't that a, uh, I think that's a line from Sound of Music. Where's a good very, the beginning is a very good place to start. I'm pretty sure that's from Sound of Music. Okay. So one of the things I would recommend, and I should have had a package with me, but hey, why would I do that? Um, I'm trying to see if I have one really close. I know I have them somewhere. I just don't know where. Note cards are a great way to start. Oops, sorry, I should put the card in view. So note cards come in a package. Oh, I forgot there. I thought I screwed up again. Uh, you'll see on one of the other cards. I was making. I was trying different things, and I I, I stamped on both sides of a note card, not realizing I, I had already stamped on the other side. Um, these are the note cards. They are when they're folded. They're five by three and a half, which is I need to find. Here's a here's a standard card base, which makes them about a half an inch on either side shorter than the average card base. This is I'm in Canada, so North American sizes, letter sizes, eight and a half by eleven. Um, if you're in Europe, a, a standard card base is a little bit narrower and a little bit taller. So I don't actually know what size their note cards are, but the note cards are designed to be just a bit smaller, right? And they're very quick, they're very handy. Note cards can still be mailed. Um, at least here they can. I don't I can't speak to every jurisdiction, but I know for Alberta, Canada. Um, these are good. For, it's Canada Post. It's federal, so it's got to be Canada. Uh, these are good to mail. Anything smaller than this, I don't think you can mail. Like we used to have these little slimline cards. Those were too small to mail. So what you get when you get note cards is you get a package of 20 note cards, and they're already cut to this size, and they're already scored. And then, I don't have one that I didn't stamp. Oh, yes, I do. So they come like this. Here we go. There we go. They come flat in a box. You get 20 note cards that are already stamped. I don't know if I can, oh, there you go, and scored, and 20 envelopes. Uh, they're about to go up in price, and I don't, I only know the old price, I don't know the new price. Order them before the 1st of May, and they're, I think it's 11.75 a package. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, look at the luck here. See, I never really plan out what I'm going to say or do, so um, I just wing it, but sometimes I'm lucky that my messy desk has what I need. Okay, so these note cards are currently eleven seventy-five. They're going to be thirteen seventy-five. You get twenty of them. That is still a wicked good deal, and it's a good starting level card. Now, I have so many things on my desk. <laughs> I got to move some of these things out of the way. Um, here's the other thing that uh, you get to learn about Tracy. Tracy loves tea. Sorry, and I just made that cup and it was poorly timed and then I started the video and I still want to, I want to drink it while it's hot. I like piping, piping hot tea. Uh, there is always a cup next to me. It's either full, because I just made it, 
empty because I just finished it. And on occasion it'll have this much because it got too cold before I finished it. And then sometimes I'll drink it just as cold tea. But um, <clears throat> Sorry, I could feel the tickle coming. Okay, so this is my first card that I made. And I made this with one stamp. Well, that's not actually true. I could have made it with one stamp set. I just happened to need a birthday card. And so I picked a birthday sentiment. Um, but with one ink pad and one stamp pad, let's just go, or one stamp set. Let's just go with that. Um, in the case of which stamp set I'm using, because you're all going to be curious. I actually, this was the stamp set that came with the March Paper Pumpkin Kit. Oops, let's do that right side up. So this was the stamp set that came with it. And yes, I could have used any of these sentiments. There's great. Some of my cards do have this heartfelt thanks on them. Um, oh, I guess this one says, have a beautiful birthday. I missed that. It's the little things that matter. You've been on my mind. So that will cover a bunch of occasions. I love, love, love this line art. Now, because March was Paper Pumpkin's birthday, ten, uh, 13th birthday, I want to say. 2003. 11th birthday. Maybe it was 11th birthday. Um, it also came with a bonus stamp set, which is this one, which does two-step stamping, which maybe I'll use this one to do the two-step stamping example because oh, I love the stamp set. But again, it's this line art. I absolutely love it. So for the most part, I made all these cards using either this flower or this flower and a stamp set. You don't need to have a ton of stuff. This is how I'm showing you to start with. Um, I, I pretty much, for this whole pile of stuff, and I mean, I have all 50 colors, all of the cardstock colors, most of the packs of DSP, uh, a couple hundred stamp, well, who am I kidding, a couple hundred, 500 stamp sets, uh, all the dies, like, yeah. But you can make awesome cards with a whole lot less than that. So this one, you're saying, but Tracy, I see two colors on there. Nope. That's one color. And I will actually show you what I did. Oh, there we go. Um... It's called Stamping Off. Um, I've also heard it called Generational Stamping. So this is, I used the black stamp pad. I'm gonna use a different one because I'm gonna show you just as a side note. Um, it will give you, you can use any ink pad. You can stamp um, and depending how, how, depending on the color of the ink pad really, um, you can get multiple colors out of one ink pad. And it's, it's, they're just different hues of the same color because each time your ink is getting a little bit lighter. So one of the main things that people do with this, other than stretching your ink pads and making them go farther, is um, you can also make it look like motion. So I picked just for this sample, just because I wanted to show you what I meant. And I haven't actually tried it ahead of time because this is how I roll. I like to just try things live and hope they work. Um, I've done it with motorcycles and bicycles and boats and all sorts of other things um people running i had a stamp of somebody running the one time um but i'm gonna try with a hammer this time because in my head i had an idea and i was like let's see if it works so here's here's stamping off or generational stamping we're gonna ink this up and i'm just gonna make sure because i just randomly grabbed this ink pad and I thought this was a great idea, but I'm not actually sure if that is dark enough to give me what I, the effect I want. <laughs> so we're just going to go back to the original plan and use the black one. Sorry, I, just really, I didn't clean the stamps in between. I really should have, but I did. Okay, so I'm going with the black stamp pad. And here's how I got this one. I guess maybe that's even better because you'll see it. So I've inked up and I make sure, because I, because I know what I'm doing, I'm making sure or not because I know what I'm doing, because I know what I want to achieve. I'm making sure this is good and inky. If I was just stamping a sentiment or something, I probably wouldn't stamp that many times, but I'm making sure this thing is as loaded up as it can be. Now, here's how it goes. I stamp the first time, and I get black. And I stamp the second time, and I get a little bit lighter. And I stamp the third time, and I get lighter still. And I didn't pick a very big piece of paper, so um, it's going off the edge of the paper. But you'll be, I'm going to hold it closer. But that's all it is. Without re-inking in between, I kept stamping. So you see, so I've got four times. And it would look better if I hadn't run out of paper. I should have started a little bit higher or used a bigger piece of paper. So this was my original one. And you see how each time it just gets lighter. But it also simulates motion. Right? It's kind of a cool effect. But in the case of I'm just starting and I don't have a ton of supplies, it lets you have two colors from one stamp pad. Now, I did do a sample. 
and you'll see the, um, these are basically the colors that I'm using as we go. Um, this is the one that I did in Daffodil Delight. And you'll notice this is like fully stamped, right? Like I got good coverage. It's, it's a well inked ink pad. The second one, not so good, just like very light. The third one, not even sure if I can get it to show. It's so like faint. You can just see little bits. Um, so some colors, this just doesn't work so well. Now you could make sure that this camp is camp. Uh, ink pad is thoroughly stamped up, inked up, ready to go, and you might be able to get, make this work. But this is a lighter color, so and that's why I switched out the other one because the 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 initial color of it was very light. So I'm not sure it's going to work. Then there are colors that are genius. This is same same uh, stamp. This is Poppy Parade, and as you can see, I never re-inked. Oops, here, let's do it this way. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. By the time I got seven, I ran out of paper because I didn't expect it to last that long. This this time I purposely used a long strip, but it lasted longer than I thought. So you'll notice though, and even like these two are both like pretty solid images. And then it starts to get more like the watermark shadow effect, which is kind of cool too. So there's lots of things you can do with this, but that's one way to make it look like you got more ink pads than you do. And like I said, it, try it. it. Different colors will react different ways. Now, it is also possible <laughs> that when you're starting out, and you can buy little um, packages of uninked ink pads and ink them up. That's one way if you don't have a bunch. You can buy the little um, Tampa Up offers a group of, I want to say seven. But I should have looked that up first. Stampin' Ink Spots which work quite well. They're just a little tiny one. Sorry, I'm off screen. They're just a little, like little tiny squares. Uh, they're great when you're first getting started. You could add re inker to them so you can use that same little spot forever. Um, yeah, I think there's seven of them. And, and it's like the basics, right? There's a gray, but then there's also like red, yellow, green, blue. You know, I almost want to say the rainbow. Red, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, purple, but... I'd have, to, I'd have to look. But anyways, you can do it with little stamp and spots. So whichever way you do it, here's the almost the same card. I just picked a slightly different... Oh, I guess I did use a different stamp set. I was randomly doing like whatever was on my desk at the time that I was making these. But um, So this is just two different colors of stamp pads. Right? Now I could make both of these. I could make four colors if I wanted to because I could stamp this one off and this one off. Um, I also screwed up. This is the card <laughs> that I... The note card that I stamped on one side and then stamped on the other. So I did all I did was like just because I wanted it to work, is I cut the the note card down to make it more like a layer and just stuck it on another note card. So I didn't have a weird note card. Um, the other thing that I will tell you is I like to stamp my envelopes and I like to stamp inside my card. And you'll notice that sometimes on the inside of the card because I want to make it so that if somebody really wants to write a lot, they can write over the stamp part and it'll still be readable. So I, a lot of times I will stamp off whatever I'm stamping in, on the inside just to make it a little bit lighter on the inside as well. So that one, I've added a second color. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to add a third color. Uh, or I'm going to give you three colors, I should say. This is also a full-size card, right? Um, like I said, I love the note cards, but I wanted to show you that even with just a little bit on a full-size card, it still works. So it looks like this is just a bit... Sorry, I always have an envelope behind that's kind of skewing how that looks. So there's the, of course I got the envelope on that one too. Nope, okay. So there's the two sizes together, right? So here's my my simple one that I made. And this flower is so awesome. So all I did with this is I had a scrap piece of paper that I stamped on. If, you're, if, you, have, if you have a pack of paper that you're cutting into bases, chances are you're going to have scraps or use one of the sheets for your layers. Because I'll show you in a minute what you can do with cool, like just with by cutting out. So here's another way to do it. <clears throat> right? This is um, this is actually a stamp that looks like this. But using the same technique I'm going to show you here in a second on this flower, <clears throat> I cut it so that I could stamp the two words separately, like side by side instead of on top of each other, so that I could get long skinny, which is what I wanted. Then you'll notice I have green red and yellow um i have daffodil delight poppy parade and mossy meadow for those who are familiar with the stampin up colors um 
I don't. I never used an ink pad on this. Because what I used, oops, that was my trial color. What I used was three markers. Now, and I'm, I'll show you the other ones in a minute. This is a pair of blends. Blends comes in pairs. That is Daffodil Delight. And this is a marker. This technique will not work with blends. And blends are very bad for your stamps. So don't color with blends directly onto your stamps. With a marker, blends have lots of other purposes though. Coloring, and you can color, like you could color an embellishment. If I wanted these plain embellishments that are just clear with little gold flecks in them, if I wanted them to be yellow, I could color with the blends over top of this. These are alcohol based. They will color on these things and it will stay colored. I cannot use my marker to color embellishments. It just wipes right off, but I can use my marker on a stamp. So again, there'll be a, there'll be a longer just thing of this, but oh, I, I, I got rid of, I got rid of my sample of paper. <laughs> just one moment. Okay. So using the same stamp, um, and I'm just going to do it real quick here just to show you what I mean. This is this is all I, all I had to do. I'm taking my three my three markers and I'm using the brush end, so the bigger end as opposed to the small. You can see the skinny line is for the bullet and the thicker line is for the brush end. And all I'm doing is going over top of my stamp. I want this is the stem that I want to be green. It's very shadowy all of a sudden I don't know. This is the stem that I want to be green. The flower that I want to be red. And I'm just I'm using the flat side of my brush. And I'm putting ink and I'm being I'm just going on the lines I want. Um, some stamp sets much harder than others. Uh, this one's super easy to do this. But it's not really a big deal because if you go over, just use a little Q-tip or if you have a blender pen that works, or a little wipe depending what you're doing, and just wipe off if you the area you don't want if you get red where you don't want it. Let's say. And then I'm just putting this yellow in the center, right? And because this is a line stamp, like I said, it's really easy to do. Um, I did the same idea on, on this heartfelt one. I just colored one word, cleaned the stamp, colored the other word. So here's my thing. Now, because I've been yapping a little bit, as I want to do, um, this may have dried a little bit. So this is called huffing. <sighs> I don't know why. And it just gets a little bit of the breath um, and it goes onto the stamp. And it just kind of moistens the ink a little bit. And it gives you a very cool effect. Now, I find that when you do stamping on, now every now and again you'll get like a perfect line. It'll be like a sweet, solid disc. But lots of times it is more, um, it's not blotchy, that's not the right word, but it's, it, it'll, it's more um, worn looking. I like it. It's a cool effect. But if all you have is a set of markers or if you're get, just getting started and you're like, well, I want to have more colors, but I can't afford to buy a bunch of big ink pads or I don't have room to store ink pads. I have to use markers. It gives you a cool effect and you could do it with any stamp, the the photopolymer ones or the, um, the red rubber ones. Now what I've done and, and we, adhesives is a whole other discussion, but you will have some form of adhesive adhesives. I would say if you're just starting out buy dimensionals, dimensionals are life changing. <laughs> Or at least card changing. Um, with with most cards, I have many layers of dimensionals. Um, I make sure that they can still fit through the mail slot. But I'm going to show... Okay, first, I'll show you this card. So I did pop these up on dimensionals. Just because it was easier to do it to begin with. Because I could have stamped right on the card. Then on a little scrap piece of paper, I stamped out an extra leaf. And here's my little flower and I just fussy cut it. I just took my scissors and I just fussy cut around the edge. And I put little dimensionals on the back of it as well. And I'm just gonna set it over top like that. So now I've kind of made my card 3D, but still I've used very few supplies. Isn't that nice? I don't know, I'd love to get this. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll, we'll do the adhesive story in a separate video. I got lots to show you today. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, and it, oh, I forgot to stamp on the inside. Okay, so here we go. Let's just try it out because I like to live on the edge. Okay, so I put the stamp down. I did not clean it, but I should be able to even with markers use it again, even without reinking. So I am going to huff on it a bit because it would have dried a little bit. And then I'm going to go straight down. I'm going to 
I'm going to let it hold for a little bit so I can get as much ink as possible off. Oh, look at that. The only thing I didn't get was the yellow. Like, well, I did. It's just super, super faint. So living on the edge like I am, I'm just going to use my marker. There we go. That's not perfect, but it's on the inside and it's just a little bit. There, I just used my marker and gave it a bit of yellow. Um, I could see the thing underneath. I just couldn't. It just didn't. There obviously wasn't any yellow, enough yellow. Or like I said, from the example I did earlier, the yellow doesn't really work to stamp twice. So there you go. But just markers. Now, it's possible you're making cards and maybe you're starting out and you've actually got more than just some basic white to work with. Maybe you have some cardstock, some different color cardstocks. Look at this. This is the... Have I used this one or have I just been using the little flower? Okay, so this I've just been using the little flower up till now. So this is a note card as well. And the big image on a note card looks so awesome. And all I did was stamp it in black. I stamp, I cut a little strip of pink that was laying on my desk, I'll be honest. This is um, petal pink. And then this, You're Simply Marvelous. Um, this label is just a strip of white cardstock. And all I did was clip off the corners. It looks a lot like our Countryside Inn dies. But really, it's just a rectangle that I clipped the corners on. And, and it just makes it look a little bit fancier. So look, But look at how striking that card is. One ink pad, one note card, and a little strip of paper, and a little scrap of white. Now, what I just did with the other card, I'm going to show you another one. This is the same thing. This is the two ink pads that I had. I stamped the flower, and I stamped the Mother's Day sentiment. And then on a piece of pink scrap... I stamped with pink ink on pink scrap paper. <laughs> I stamped and I popped up this little flower. So the only thing on the card that is popped up and colored in is the flower. And I did use my marker to make the little bit of yellow there. But again, very few supplies. And look at how cute that card is. And this just sort of highlights the flower. Um, <clears throat> now, going back to the bigger one, this is almost the same card, right? Happy Mother's Day little bit of pink slightly I mean they use two different stamp sets but but all this this one has impact because I've colored the flowers now I'm going to do a whole separate class on coloring um, and when people ask when they're first getting started and they say what supply should I have like I don't know what to get should I get blends or should I get markers unfortunately you if you ask me that question I will give you an answer but it won't be a short one <laughs> why uh, because they both serve a purpose. I love to color. Love to color. And I love to color with blends. In this case, I use three. And the reason they're blends and the reason there's two of them is because you blend the colors. There's a light and a dark of each color and you can do some shading and some blending and stuff, which I, I think you can see if I hold it a little bit closer. You can see there's some blending and stuff in there. <clears throat> I can use these to color ribbon. I can use these to color embellishments. They do good things. I can use these on my stamps though. Which one do you get? It's a preference. If you have the option, both. Because <laughs> then you can do all sorts of things. So in this case, same thing. I use the same stamp pad. Um, and this black memento ink is the ink that you stamp if you're going to use blends. It's also just black, but it's the black you use with blends. So this this um, blends tend to bleed through. So this was stamped in black and then colored. Now I did do it on a separate piece of cardstock, which I don't, oh, there you can go. And I do like the white on white layer. It's kind of a cool look. Um, the, the blends will color through your paper. Like if I didn't have this on a separate layer, it would have colored through onto the inside. Is that the end of the world? Nope, not at all. Because when they look at the card on the outside and go, wow, look at that, pretty flowers. And like, oh, look at the coloring, oh. And they open it up and they read the nice thing you put inside. Does it really matter if they see a bit of it come through? I don't think so. But I have lots of paper, so <laughs> I did it that way. Now, this is the same thing. This piece of pink, I just hand cut it and flagged the ends. This little square, hand cut, stamped on, right? Very few supplies. Look how nice that card is. Loving it. Now, as I, I'm sort of building in supplies as we go. So this one. Ta-da! I'm finally going to introduce some embellishments. 
Um, and I could be using the same pack on everything. I have a feeling I switched because I was making them at different times. And I have just stuff all over my desk at any given point, And I tend to just grab what's near me. But so let's let's say we have more colors of paper. And this could this could have easily been the same petal pink as it is. It's pool party just because I wanted to give you some different ideas. Um, these are some white scraps, like white scraps of paper. Right now, I realized after I, I was like getting this ready, that I die cut these using the um, deckled rectangles dies. But this card would look just as good and it would look the same if you just cut squares of rectangles, like just using your cutter or scissors or whatever. Like you can see the edges are meant to look like they're torn. Um, if you're good at tearing paper, you could just tear the same thing. Um, but I always have a stack of things like die cuts and labels and stuff. And I grabbed them without thinking and, and then realized I should have hand cut them, but it gives you the, the idea. I've introduced a punch. Punches are great for so many things. You should, if you're, if you're just getting started and you want to just, you want to ramp up your cards, you should get a punch. Cause not only can I, could I have used a punch like this, but I could have stamped these flowers on the same white paper and then punched them out and gotten different shapes and layered like the punch on the card. You know what I mean? Like punches you can do so much with. If you get like very specific ones, they're still, you you can usually find more than the intended use for them. But but like a label punch, so much you can do. You could put a strip of paper over the top and it peeks out as a background. There's so many things you can do with a punch. So we've introduced the punch. This is, now I have a bunch of different colors of ink, but as I'm, I'm assuming as you're going, you're going to get more, or if you buy the starter pack of, the little ink spots, you'll have a whole bunch to start with. So I've got the daffodil, the petal pink, and the poppy parade. And then this is pool party, that's the other color. You'll see when we get to the end, these are the colors that were in the designer series paper. And if you don't know what colors to use in a card, and you grab a piece of designer series paper and use the colors from it. The, the artisans, the artists at Snappin' Up are very good at knowing what colors go together. Uh, so I'm just using the ones that are you'll see in the future cards. That's where the colors come from. And you know they look good together. So for this background piece, I took a separate piece, and that's just personal preference because I could have stamped directly on the card base. Um, and I just stamped like the same flowers to make a background. And then I added some white ones. Now here's the thing that I want to show you as we're going along. And I'll, at the very end, I'll make a point with a couple cards, but there are pictures I have of cards, of other people's cards. But um, these three white panels that I've stamped on could be three pieces of designer series paper. They could be three different images. They could be three different colors embossed. They could be a lot of things. This is now starting to give you a layout for a card. Like these other ones are a pretty simple layout. Here's a big image with a label, right? Here's a smaller image with just image and the stamp beside it. It doesn't seem like much, but it's a layout. It's just a very simple layout. Now we're starting to add things to our layout. But this layout, I could switch out all the colors. I could switch out the different stamps. I could switch out the sentiment. I could use a different punch. I could put different little uh, embellishments on it. Like I've just thrown a couple little sparklies on here. Um, and I would get a different looking card using the same layout. I love how, how like floral and full this card is. But I could have I could have just as easily embossed this piece and just the white label so, there, so it was cleaner. Right. There's there's so many ways you can go, but that's a good idea for a layout. And if you don't have a lot, this is kind of like making your own designer series paper. If you don't have a designer, just stamp a background. Right. Now we're doing the same thing here. We're adding we're, we're we've got some background stamping and I've stamped on a piece of paper and I've got my little embellishments. Look at this me sneaking it up and I've got my little punch circle. But now I've got a little piece of designer series paper. Right, so I've added, I'm adding on designer series paper. This is one of my favorite layouts. And I was going to try to do this without the punch so I could show you that it was all just hand cut. And I had a square originally, but I just, I like to mix and match and I like how the circle looks with the squares. It's personal preference. There's no, there's no real right or wrong. It's all personal preference and that just happens to be the way I like it. This is all the ink on this one is petal pink. It's the same color as the background. But look how different it looks. Stamp tone on tone, pink on white, and then this one is a much finer um, line stamp set than this chunky stamp set. And so, but it's all the same color. It just kind of gives you like a nice textured look. Little strip of paper, 
I added on a little bit of twine. I've got a little bit more embellishing. And then these embellishments are actually from the same package as the ones that were on the last card. These were in the Christmas one. I love them. Um, and they carried over. So there's just some different. There's Poppy Parade. Oh, I didn't write on this one. I usually do. I want to say Pool Party. Melon Mambo White and Granny Apple Green. So a couple of those happen to be the colors I need. But I love this card. So again, you could put an emboss layer on the back. You could put DSP on the back. Or you could stamp. The stamping is just like the most minimalist of those three options. Pick a white square. It could be hand cut, die cut, it could be stamped on, it could be embossed, it could be designer series paper. Put a complimentary strip across the bottom. Again, it could be any one of those things with a circle. Here's another layout for you. It's a lot of fun. Now, for this next card, I use mostly the same items, but I've started to introduce some die cuts. Because when time budget interest allows get a die cutting machine because oh the fun you will have uh it it opens up your options for your card making but just so many fun things you can do with dies and embossing folders so this is the same i took a i have a bigger piece of, of designer shares paper and yes i could have just put a square on the back but i like i like the look of the of the strips of it so this was a square and when I first put it on the card, I realized that it was the right width that I wanted, but it was too short. And so I was going to go cut another piece, and then I thought, oh, no. I'm, and so I just cut it into strips. So it's also a secret to make your DSP stretch further. Make strips. And, and I kept them in the right order. Like, if I didn't have stuff on top of it, <laughs> um, you would see there, like, it is the pattern of the, of the DSP is in order. I've just spaced it out, put little strips in between. There is actually a strip under there, too, but then I went and covered it. So then I've introduced a couple more die cut labels because now I got a die cut. I'm adding some die cuts. This could very easily be hand cut square or rectangle. If you're really good, or if you're good at tracing and cutting, you could hand cut your circles. But this one is um, this one is die cut. Again, a punched one would work as well. This flower, I stamped it tone on tone and just cut it out. I've got the same embellishments. I've got the same little piece of twine. But look at how look at how like. We're raising the bar on the card. And again, here is another layout that you could use um, with just different stuff. This could be strips of cardstock. Um, this could be a die cut. Um, this could be a different shape label that you could have different colors as opposed to, like I've only got really got a couple colors, but you see this DSP here is where I was getting all my colors from, right? There's the petal pink and the pool party, the poppy parade white, and there's just little bits of... Um, there's little bits of yellow on the uh, on the flower centers that I, I've just sort of pulled out. Uh, another good layout. So just when you do get a package of DSP, well, for starters, most DSP, unless it's a specialty paper, most of our designer series paper um, has two sides to it. And in general, one side will be more bold or more patterned. Like if you've got a golf theme or a fishing theme or a, um, a bumblebee theme or I'm trying to think what the different ones are, coffee theme, that will be on one side and usually the reverse side of the same piece of paper is is a more subtle or a more patterned one all the colors coordinate you can mix and match all you want and the papers go together in this case this all came from the same package this is not the back side of the same piece but you'll notice there's different some are a little more subtle some are a little more bold so i wanted to make a card using a little more subtle <laughs> piece of paper and to me if you want like a softer look monochrome so, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've added a couple little things in here, but for the most part, this card is two colors, and it's mostly one color because I've got the petal pick background. I like to um, I like to put a little um, piece of cardstock behind my DSP. I, I like the look of it, but you could put the DSP just straight on your cardstock. Again, I like my die cut, so this is a die cut tag, and I did emboss with the embossing folder. I started introducing embossing folders. love embossing folders. Um, and so I did get a little bit of texture here. Um, but yeah, this, I mean, I, I did I use the same stamp. Um, I stamped a little sentiment here, added a little bit of bling. In this case, I have linen twine instead of the white twine because white would have just got lost on here. Um, and there's another layout for you. I, I like my jaunty angle of my tag, but it doesn't have to be at a jaunty angle. You could be straight up and down. It could be a bigger piece, a more square piece, a hand cut, like just a rectangle or a square. It doesn't have to be a tag. Put a couple of different strips. It could be embossed. It could be designer paper. It could be um, a colored paper that you stamped on. It could be a white color that you stamped on. There's just, there's another one. 
And then my final one, it's so funny because these cards, I have a, I have a clean and, and simple sort of more taste, I think. So even my like full cards with like bringing out all the, are not as over the top as some <laughs> the design, um, just because that's my style. But I'm going to show you something on my phone because, because I, uh, you'll see what I mean in a second here. So this is my, this is my like, okay, now I've used all the things card. Um, and I, and I have to open my phone first because I have to remember what her name is. So I got this design, which I loved the minute I saw it from Shelby Ragsdale. I don't actually know where she's from, but we had our designer event, um, designer or demonstrator event, uh, a, a few weeks ago in March. Um, and this was one of her swap cards that she made. And I saw it and I was like, oh my goodness. So thank, this is why you post pictures of things because you get such inspiration. And I'm going to show you, my point is going to be how you can make, like you can copy somebody's card, but make it your own. But yes, I love this card and I love Shelby's card. So yes, Shelby Ragsdale, thank you very much. Um, so here we go. I have an embossed background with this cute new folder that's in the online exclusives that I love with little flowers. It's not the same flowers, but it's little flowers and little spots. I've got a piece of designer paper. I've got some die cuts, uh, another die cut. Got a little bit of coordinating color here. I did a little bit of coloring with my blends. I got some bling and I got some twine. So like I said, I got all the things on this card, but it, it's still, I built to it, right? It's still not, other than maybe the, the big shot and all the dies and stuff and embossing folders. If I, if I, if I, used a different shape or hand cut my sentiment out and, and cut this as a rectangle and then I just stamped or something. I could still make almost the same card and I bet you I'd still have the same effect without the using the die cut machine. I just happen to love mine and use it all the time. Now here's the original card. Right? This is the picture I saw and there's the original card. So it's maybe not easy to see here, just but I'll have to put mine down. So on mine I showed you I had an embossing folder. But if you look on this one, you will notice that she didn't actually put an embossed, an embossed layer on the back. She did some stamping and she didn't stamp the whole card. And then I don't actually know what designer series paper that is. And, but the, the three die cuts that she used and the stamp are from the everyday details bundle. So it's got some great line art stamps in it. And then it's got, Oh, the best set of, of die cut. It's got some awesome die cuts in it. So this was the original card. So there you go. There's two cards, same layout, different. And I mean, I could have made the layout this way. Oops, let's go this way. I could have made the layout this way, pretending things were like facing the right direction, right? I could, I could jazz it up a little bit. Um, or I could, I mean, I can change things up as, as much as I want to make it look me or to make it look you. <laughs> now here, I'm going to show you another card. I got a favorite which way to switch. So this lady's name is Brie Kathleen. Now this is what I meant by different styles and over the top because this is to a certain extent the same card because if you notice she's got a background in her case she's got some gold foil with a um like a, that could be the edge of her card or she could have put a layer there she's got a black layer and then she's got an embossed layer that she has distressed the edges of so she's got a way fancier background but she's still got a background piece then she's got a big element so i have a big piece of dsp She's got a big um, birdhouse. By the way, this is a sneak peek from the new catalog. Or if you tune in tomorrow, I ordered this set. My card will not look like this. I can, I can guarantee it. This card is amazing though. So as much as this is not my style to make, I can appreciate this. Like this card is amazing. Um, but I did order this bundle. So yeah, big element. And then she's got a, a bit smaller element. She's got a couple smaller ones, but some smaller elements on top. She's got her sentiment on it. She's got a little bit of ribbon. She's got a little, um, her ribbon wraps around and then ties. So she's got the same idea of the, like, a little, like everything's vertical. So she's got one little bit of horizontal. So really, there you go. It's hard to believe that those are the same idea, but they're pretty close, aren't they? And that's really how the design comes when you, when you do it. You see a card and you, you and you go okay what have i got to work with what have i got to, like if you didn't have any of these things but you had these things you could make this card or it just gives you an idea sometimes i just see something and i'm like oh i like that background i like how she just stamped that little bit of a background oh i like how she did oh i like how 
on this one you might just go oh, okay so she's she's gold embossed on vellum and then colored it with blends it's a very cool look she's got the gold metallic paper so she's got all the things uh, and she made this gorgeous card you i'm going to make a simplified when i get my stuff i'm going to make and i will post it at one point but i'm going to make a simple version of this the way i would make it with the distressed wood paper that's coming and the more neutral to tones like the natural tones um, and i'll show you a comparison but it's all about finding your style and working with what you have and you can't necessarily expect i mean maybe you can there's nothing wrong with it um my very first stampin up night that i went to um all i had seen was they were at the the booth next to me at a teacher's convention um i was working for wildfire at the time and promoting a, a youth program so we were at a teacher's convention and next to me was a stampin up lady two of them and um i just watched them all day long fascinated with the stuff and went and did a workshop with some friends and but the like i bought a whole lot the very first night i was hooked instantly i can tell you so sometimes it does happen you'll come out of the gates with a bunch of stuff and if you do maybe maybe this will help you know what to do with some of it because at the time i didn't really know what to do with all of it um or maybe you build up to it maybe you start small and you add to your stuff as you go you start with some basic papers then you add some colors and then you add some more papers and as you go, you learn some techniques and do some things. And then by the time, by the time you run out of desk space, I've already run out of desk space, um, you'll have a whole gamut <laughs> of cards that you can make and give. Some will be quick. And even, and even at this point, um, maybe I just need a really quick card for somebody as I'm running out the door. And maybe I have time to make this one. Maybe I have time to make that one. Maybe I have time to gold heat emboss, <laughs> right? But find your design style, start small, work your way up, <laughs> and then just play with it. Add elements. If you see something you like off a card, save a picture or make a note. Oh, I like how they embossed the background. Oh, I like how they just did a strip. Oh, I like how, oh, I like how these two. So I will sometimes see a card and I will be like, whoa, that design or that picture is like, you know, it'll be a stamp and I'll just be like, nope, but I'll like the colors. Or I'll see, I'll see a layout that I like that has horrible colors. Or at least to me, they're horrible. They're not horrible colors. So pick, pick the, like, look for inspiration. I, I will see somebody wearing a shirt with a cool pattern on it and think, hmm, what do I have that I can make? I have those colors and I see everything in Stampin' Up! colors, right? I have a Knight of Navy shirt on. <laughs> I actually also have Knight of Navy's pants on, so I can't really be too creative right now, but um, depending what I look at, like I see everything in Stampin' Up! Colors. So if I see somebody, but then I'm like, oh, see, that's, see that that has cactuses on it. I don't have a cactus stamp, but I do have a leaf stamp. I bet you if I did, like design comes from all over the place. So other people's pictures, everyday life, um, ideas you had, things you see, but you don't have the stamp set, so you try a new one. However you find your design, design, I hope you have fun finding it because I sure have fun finding mine and mine is ever evolving. I don't think it's ever going to like settle. I have, I have for the most part a style, but I can branch out when I need to. I should have got you my vintage card to show you. I made a hundred percent vintage. It took me three hours, but it's very vintagey and, and sepia and the different colors and things that were totally not me, <laughs> but I did it and I had a lot of fun doing it. So, um, yeah, go play. Find your style, make some designs. Feel free to copy any of these ones, whether it's the layout, the colors, the technique. I hope you have fun. Thanks very much. Uh, this is Tracy, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator and the Paper Pusher. And uh, I hope I see you get to stamp with you soon. Thanks. Bye.